okay next we have another topic which is hydrogen atom in bohr theory so we will use bohr theory to calculate the radius of the hydrogen atom radius of hydrogen atom and also we will calculate the energy levels the second one is energy levels of hydrogen atom so here the first one is radius of hydrogen atom is we know that <coughs> Uh, there is only one electron which is revolving around the nucleus so here we have this nucleus and electron is revolving around the nucleus in the first shell like in the k shell so this is the k shell an electron is revolving in this shell this is the first shell okay k shell now we consider that the distance of this electron from the center of this nucleus is r this is the distance r here we have this is the electron nucleus now nucleus in nucleus we have one proton and one neutron uh, which is not core interest here the only thing which is this electron which is revolving around this nucleus in the first orbit so we consider its radius to be r now according to bohr theory according to bohr theory uh, we can say that now this is the nucleus which is a positive charge and electron is a negative charge so there is a force of attraction or the coulomb force between nucleus and electron is given by we have this k the charge of the nucleus is ze and the charge of the electron is e divided by r square we know that if two point charges which are separated by let's suppose this is q1 this is q2 which are separated by a distance r then coulomb star tells us that the force of attraction or repulsion between these two point charges is given by k q1 q2 or r square where k is basically 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught this is the coulomb's law so here we have positive charge electron the uh, positive charge nucleus and negative charge electron they are separated from each other by this distance r so the coulomb force between this nucleus and electron is given by this relation where k is basically the constant and its value is k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught where z e is the charge of the nucleus e is the charge of the electron and r is the distance between nucleus and electron now this electron is revolving around the nucleus so there is a centrifugal force the centrifugal force is given by as we know that whenever a body of mass m which is moving in a circular path of radius r okay this is the mass of the body and it is moving the velocity v then there is a force which is called centrifugal force which is given by mv square over r so the centrifugal force fcf centrifugal force is given by this relation mv square over r mv square over r now the direction of coulomb force is inward okay the coulomb force direction is inward while the centrifugal force direction is outward so these two forces with now this electron only revolve in this orbit but the electron is revolving in this orbit only if the coulomb force is balanced by the centrifugal force or we can say that the electron revolve around the nucleus only when 
Coulomb force. is balanced by the centrifugal force. <coughs> so we can say that the Coulomb force which is represented by this equation Fc will be balanced by this centrifugal force which is represented by Fcf. So the Coulomb force is K Z E into E divided by R square which is equal to centrifugal force is MV square or R. Now here we have this ZE which is the charge on the nucleus. And we know that the atomic number of hydrogen is Z is equal to 1. Or we can say that there is only one proton inside the nucleus. So we have, we replace Z E by E for hydrogen atom. So this is my equation number 1. So if I replace Z E by E because Z is equal to 1, then my this equation 1 will reduce to this form, which is K E square, which is K. Now Z is equal to 1, so I will not write it here so we have ke into e which is ke square or r square is equal to mv square or r now here we have a square this square cancel with this so we left with k square or r is equal to mv square now from this i can get the value of r r is basically this distance the distance from the center of the nucleus to the electron we have to calculate this value okay so r is equal to k e square or m v square now i already mentioned in the postulate of bohr theory like the second postulate second postulate this postulate tell us that electron can revolve only in those orbit orbits in which the angular momentum is an integral multiple of h over 2 pi. Uh, in other words, we can say that the angular momentum is mvr which will be equal to nh over 2 pi. This is called, this is my sec equation number 2. So this will be, this is the second postulate of Bohr theory. This postulate tell us that the angular electron revolve only in those orbit for which the angular momentum, this is the angular momentum is an integral multiple of h over 2 pi where n is the integer where n has values varies from 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now from this equation I can calculate the value of velocity. So velocity will be equal to nh over 2 pi mr where m is the mass of the electron, r is the radius of hydrogen atom this radius it's given here and h is basically the Planck constant h is Planck's constant and I already mentioned its value its value is 6.626 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joule second now this is my equation number 3 now here we have velocity in this equation number 2 and we calculate the value of velocity here so if I put equation 3 in equation 2 putting equation 3 and 2 we have so equa equation 2 is we have this r 
which is equal to k e square divided by m and we have v square and v value is given by this so we have this n h really the value of velocity is n h over 2 pi m r and we have this square here so I take square of this whole terms <coughs> so if I simplify this equation we get r is equal to we have k e square over m now this if I take its reciprocal we have this this will become equal to 2 pi m r square over n square h square in other words I can I can also simplify it to be like this k e square over m into we have square here so we have 2 pi m r will become 4 pi square m square r square over n square h square now on this side we have this r so here we have r and here we have r square so I will bring this r square to this side so this will become r here this r square is in multiplication if I bring it to this side it will go it will goes to the division so we have r square which is equal to now this all the terms they are in multiplication with each other so we have I will I will write it like this 4 pi square this term and then we have this mass m square now here one mass is this and here we have square so this m cancel with this square so we left with m only here and then we have k e square okay divided by n square h square now this r cancel with this r so we have only one more r here here we left with one and in the denominator we have r which is equal to 4 pi square m k e square over n square h square now r will be equal to if I invert this size then I have to invert this size also so r will be equal to n square h square over 4 pi square m k e square now all the quantities here like this is the pound constants 4 pi they are also constant mass of the electron is also constant k value is also constant in charge of the electron is also constant so the only variable quantity is n here n can have different values started from 1 2 3 and so on we call it principal quantum number quantum number so this equation or this radius depends on the value of r n on the value of n so I can write it as like this r n will be equal to n square h square or 4 pi square m k e square now we have hydrogen atoms okay we have the nucleus and then outside the nucleus we have different shells okay this shell are represented this is the k shell this is the l shell this is the m shell now for the k shell the value of n is 1 for l shell the value of n is 2 for m shell the value of n is 3 and so on and so on we have different shells here so the electron which is in the k shell okay since electron is in the k shell is in the k shell for which the value of principal quantum number n is 1 so if I put n 
is equal to 1 in above equation we have this r1 because n is 1 so this is r1 this is the radius of the casial which is equal to 1 square h square over 4 pi square m k e square is the radius of this will give us the radius of first shell by first I means k shell so now if I put the value of all those constant here then R1 will be equal to 1 square ok and we have Planck constant which is 6.626 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joule second square and then we have in the denominator we have 4 and the value of pi is 3.1415 and we have a square here and we know that the mass of the electron is 9.1 and to 10 raised to the power minus 31 kilogram and we have the value of k is this is the coulomb constant okay uh, its value is 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square and we have this charge of the electron E and its value is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb and we have square here now if I simplify all those terms like the, all, all this constant then we get the value of R1 which is equal to 0 0.52 into 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter and we know that 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter is equal to 1 angstrom uh, 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 10 meters so this I can also write it like this 0 0.52 angstrom this is the radius of uh, this represent the smallest possible radius of hydrogen atom or this represent the radius of hydrogen atom by radius I mean when the electron is in the casial now uh, this represent uh, this represent the radius of uh, first orbit of first shell orbit of shell now in order to calculate the radius of the second shell what we will do here now for the second shell I will put n is equal to 2 because second shell is L shell or L orbit and for L shell or L orbit we have the value of n which is equal to 2 so if I put 2 here while rest of the quantities they are the same so it means the radius of the second shell which I represent by R2 because for second shell second shell I means L shell or L orbit we have n is equal to 2 so the radius of the second shell R2 is given by we have 2 square because here I will put 2 I will replace n by 2 and rest of the quantities are the same now this whole quantity if I put the values of this whole quantity it will give us 0 0.52 angstrom so rest of the quantity is the same so we have 0 0.52 angstrom here now similarly for third shell by third I means M shell or third orbit we have n is equal to 3 so radius of the third shell is represented by R3 which is equal to 3 square into 0 0.52 angstrom and similarly if I move like this and I have to calculate the radius of uh, for, for nth orbit or uh, the radius of nth orbit 
Gaussian, the radius of nth orbit is represented by Rn, which is equal to n square into 0 0.5 to angstrom. This will give us the radius of nth orbit. So this is all about radius of hydrogen atom. In the next video, I will calculate the energy of energy levels of hydrogen atoms. Thank you.